as well as the standard fair use policy, this video is protected under the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1787. Moors are awake. We are taking our place on this planet. My, uh, my nationality is Moorish. No! Don't break my window! Don't break my window! Do not break my automobile! Oh, damn it! Damn it! Let me repeat that again. <laughs> This is what Councilman Kenny asked. It says those four. It, it talks about solely only for those four areas: unregistered, suspended, or registration, or unlicensed, or or suspended license. Are you permitted to take the car? This is the question. If the person cannot produce an auto insurance proof that he is not that is not grounds for removing the vehicle, Judge Perry said no. Correct. Judge Perry said correct. It's not grounds for taking the car if they don't have those things. Mm -hmm. This is the meeting that they had. But it's not public. It's a scam that's going on. All everything that they're doing, they only targeting certain areas when they're doing this. And then it also goes into uh, Morano asked the question. That's right. If is it, if your car gets confiscated for one of one of those four infractions, they're not um, criminal acts. All moving violations are infractions. That's all they are. Breaches of contracts. But they never teach people that they are contracts. But this whole this is the case. I mean, the, the meeting that they had. And then they also was talking about um, how it wouldn't cost the city 10 cents to do it. When well, they started implementing it. Mm. But see, people need to have the motor vehicle law book to actually find out, can they do that? Now, what they're taking the vehicle, the, what they claim to take the vehicle under is Title 63, 6309, which is, where is 6309 at? And I'm going to read to you what it is in this book. And which book is that? This is the Pennsylvania Motor Vehicle Law. Okay. <laughs> and they have this in the courtroom, believe me, man. <laughs> they have this in the courtroom. 6309.2. Immobilization and towing and storage of a vehicle for driving without operating privileges, right? And then it goes on. If a person operates a motor vehicle or a combination on the highway or traffic ways of this commonwealth while a person's operating privileges is suspended, revoked, or canceled, recalled, or disqualified, or... And other persons is unlicensed as verified appropriate law enforcement officer in cooperation with the department. The law enforcement officer shall immobilize the vehicle. An appropriate judicial authority shall be notified. That's the way they're supposed to do it. Immobilize don't mean take. It means to stop it. You remember they used to tell you to get out your car yet? You right. just said that the last time, remember? Right. Yeah. That's what they're supposed to do. You're supposed to stop it. And that's due process. And then you have a hearing on it. Right. They don't do that. Because they know people is not reading this. That's one of them. There's only two ways they can take the car. Now, this is the second one. Just for those that may be looking and say, well, they quote in 6309.1. Where's that ticket at? Did I show you that ticket? This is their tickets, right? On the back of their tickets, they have all the citations that they will give you on the back of here. Um, but on here, they only have a couple of them. 6308, they got on here. 1606, they got on here. 1501 and 6308. In 1311. This is on the back of any ticket that they give you, right? Now, I'm showing to tie everything in on what they're doing to people. Mm -hmm. Now, 6309.1 says impoundment for non payment of fines, vehicles in combination with a gross vehicle weight rating at 17,000 pounds or less. Who got a. How much <laughs> a car weigh? This sounds like a truck, don't it? Mm -hmm. It sounds like a truck. It says a weight of 70,000 pounds or less. So, which one are they charging people? Then it's another one. 6309 period. So when they give people tickets, which one are they quoting? 6309.2, 6309.1, or 6309.9? So the other 6309 says impoundment of a paint for um, non payment fines for vehicles combination gross weight rating at 17,001 pounds or more. Don't know car weight that, that much. That's again, that's a tractor trailer or a truck or a bus or something like that. It has nothing to do with your private vehicle. Most of those motor vehicle laws is referring to uh, commercial vehicles. Right. And this is why I had this set up over here because in this, this is from a law dictionary and it talks about motor carriers and it talks about um, the city having the right to regulate the streets by motor vehicles for hire and the issuance of a license being permission. Just this is out of a law dictionary. And what the uh, definition is there from? This is from a law, Black's Law Dictionary. Black's Law. You know, it says the license is a very privileged um, 
is a license to operate a motor vehicle is a mere privilege and not a contract property right. So everybody keeps saying it's a contract. It's not a contract. It's a contract property right. So I issued it to you so you can work for me. So that's how I become the privilege or the permission. Because now what am I doing? I have to give back to the roads when I tear the road up. So that's why you pay the tax. So, you, you know, the license is nothing but a tax. So now if I'm using the road to tear up the road, I have to give something back to the city. Because mm -hmm. of that weight. And exactly. Because you tear it up. Now watch who's violating this every day. You got cops sitting on the pavements, you know, laziness, sitting there clicking lights. And if you see them pull up on the pavements, they supposed to pay all that. They supposed to have licenses. But they tell you that you're supposed to have it. And they're taking people's property without due process. And there's like many bad case laws, man, that um that I have on that. Where's that case law is at? And it talks about um did I bring it? I believe I left it home. And it talks I had an attorney, actually a prosecutor, ex prosecutor, and was giving me um some case laws how they couldn't take the car without having a hearing. If I can find it in these piles. What about a person don't have a driver's license? The thing is that are you see, I, I'm very careful about telling people not to have the driver's license because I know how ignorant the police are. Right. People need to be educated on this type of information, have the motor vehicle law book. So if you do or don't have the license, you know how to go in and challenge them. Because they have this book. When right. you go when you go to traffic court, they have this book. You can quote every section in here. And actually, it has by definitions inside it has definitions in this book also. And now I'm just run off a couple of definitions they got. It says passenger. A motor vehicle except a motorcycle designed primarily for the transportation of persons designed for carrying no more than 15 passengers. This is passenger vehicle. You're just not going to see the definition of regular passenger. Passenger vehicle, what do they do? They pay fare, don't they? It's a commercial activity. You won't see regular passenger in this book. No, I'm not even quite sure what Sabir Bay's intentions are by reading these definitions. I guess he's trying to run with the whole more sovereign citizen thing and the I'm not driving for commerce. And now he's trying to say that passengers only pay. But as you can see, this is from the Black's Law Dictionary 6th edition, and it clearly states what it states. On other occasions, the word is interpreted as meaning any occupant of a vehicle other than the person operating it. So, Sabir, what are you trying to teach here? I'm, I'm like totally lost. You're clearly trying to go down the sovereign citizen route. But the problem is you're reading from old ancient books and your understanding of what you read is lacking so just just stop it motor carrier it says more than a motor carrier vehicle a truck tractor trailer combination gross weight registered gross weight exceeds 17,000 pounds that's motor carrier vehicle motor vehicle a vehicle which is self-propelled except one which is propelled solely by human power or by electric power obtained from overhead trolley wires which one do you have? That's all you have in here. So which one everybody having? <laughs> which one? The motor vehicle, motor carry vehicle, motor vehicle, or which one? So this is what you'll find in the book. Excuse me, Sabir Bay. What in the doohickey are you talking about? And what in the doohickey is your point? It's very convenient of you to pull out a dictionary with such a vague definition of what a motor vehicle or a motor carrier is first and foremost i can tell that that dictionary that you're reading from is ancient you didn't even tell us which dictionary it is that you're using because you know that any intelligent person will go and see that whatever you're reading is probably just obsolete and you know you don't want that type of critique so I, I'm still not even understanding what your point is here. But since you act like whatever dictionary that you're reading from is the end-all be-all, talking about which one do you have, 
Let's go into you Morris Sovereign Citizen's favorite dictionary, Black's Law Dictionary, and let's see what it says on motor vehicle. Okay, Sabir, so here you have it. Next time you try to do a lecture in a class like this, you need to bring more than one source. Because you bring sor a source that only supports your more sovereign citizen stuff is absolutely ridiculous. Why are you trying to teach people to be sovereign citizens? Because that's all this is that you're trying to do here. You're trying to teach people that they can drive without licenses and they don't need insurance and the vehicle is this and that and personal conveyance and passenger. Stop it. The sovereign citizen stuff only leads to ruining people's lives. So don't think that these attorneys, these judges, they don't know this because the, the, to be a, a, a judge, I know in the Commonwealth, you have to study Title 75, Title 42, and Title 18. And that's why you need to be a judge? Yeah. <laughs> the administrative judges, traffic court. So they have to read this book. So if I'm sitting there and I know this, and I, that's why I couldn't be the judge. I mean, I would have this book sitting there and be like, wait a minute, I mean, analyze this for a minute. No, they don't have that. They don't have this. Okay. Dismiss. Not guilty. See? But now, we were just talking about liens, right? He even talks about liens in this book. It says, owner, a person other than a lien holder having the property right and a title to a vehicle. Other than lien, other than the lien holder. Because you can, you can have your wife being a lien holder and you can be the occupier. But now, if they were to take your car, they have to contact the lien holder. They can't sell the car without have, you know, until the lien is released. Hmm. See, it's interesting. Just like they can do it on your house. If you owe a water bill, they can put a lien against your house. Can't do anything, right? Until you satisfy the lien, right? Same thing you can do with your car is to put the lien against the car and order. they have to contact the lien holder in order to release the lien. So you can say the car can be worth, let's say, 3000 You can say I want 10000 for the vehicle. Now what happens, you're setting yourself up to get compensated. For your property being taken. Hmm. That's how you set it up. Excuse me, Severe Bay, but what in the doohickey are you talking about? Everything that you just said in that last statement is absolutely incorrect. If what you are saying is correct, where if somebody is a lien holder in yours and other particular uh, situations, these Morris Americans will be the lien holders. They're the ones that put liens on judges and courthouses. So in your scenario, you're saying in order to sell a piece of property, they have to contact the lien holder, which is 100% fraud. You're wrong because these Morris Americans put liens all over the places and they're not contacting them before they... Uh, sell the, the piece of property or whatever it is that they're trying to sell. They just simply get the fraudulent lien removed. It is that simple. Once you find out that a Morris American, a Morris Cyrus Citizen has put a lien on somebody or a building or something, they get said lien removed. So the way you just explained it is totally false and you're giving these more sovereign citizens false hope to go out there and commit a fraudulent act by putting false liens all over the place on and on people that they're in opposition with. This is ridiculous. You you need to stop it. It's very it's very simple. So that's why I said rather we have the license or not and don't have the license they can still never have jurisdiction. It's because of the ignorance of the people, they don't know. Rather, yeah, I know where I'm at and I know who I'm dealing with. So I can deal with or without it. So what we got to do is start exposing that. And these people in traffic court, that's why when you sometimes people go to fill off a traffic court, they get, as soon as you get out of traffic court and move it to common police court, they throw the case out. Because some people may tie it up. See what I'm saying? They may tie this up and have it going on and on. Because I used to go in the courtroom and quote every section out of the book. And they used to have, the, I know the date, the DA for um, 
pen dot, they carry a yellow one. But it's the same book. So I will quote every section in here inside the court because now we are in a court of records. Traffic court is not court of record. So they can say what they want to say. It could be a stenographer, it could be a tape. So usually that's why when you go to traffic court, they can say what they want to say. Shut up, what? Guilty. So when you go in there, say, oh, I want a straight, I want an appeal. I only want to be in here. I want an appeal. I want to get it moved to um, commonplace court. I want to get it moved to um, commonplace court. Get it out of there. So now what you're doing is setting up so you can ask these type of questions. So we can say, look, you're in total violation of the motor vehicle law. And then, like I said, they're betting on 99% of the people not having this book. Yeah, and people are not really taught this, this basic understanding because most people don't understand. They just think it's law. Yeah. And, yeah. and never really read up on it. But you think about it, though, it, it is a statutory law, but it's not law. <laughs> what you talking about, Will? <laughs> see, see, it's the law, this book right here, This and, and this is just for me just talking even to, like, the state police. They know that something's going on. They know about the city. They know that the city, and that's why I said people really need to start researching all this stuff and, 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 and charging these people under the RICO law. Everything you need is on the certificate of title. On the title. And actually, this is old because this is out of um, taken from the motor vehicle law also. This is, matter of fact, where's the front part of this? This is, what this says right there? Come on, man. From where? Hmm? Where from? Motor Vehicle and Bureau of Driver Life. Okay. So this is their, this is their book, right? So this is their definition. It says lien. It says, it says a lien. Security enters in a vehicle to secure unpaid debt owned by the owner to the lien holder. Lien holder. A person holding a lien on a vehicle. So everybody that gets a certificate of title never puts a lien on their vehicle. Excuse me, Sabir Bay, but what in the doohickey are you talking about? Are you suggesting that when someone purchases a car, they should put a lien on their own vehicle? What are you talking about? It is sad that this man is out here actually trying to teach people. And what makes it even sadder is that some people out there will actually listen to this and try to follow his advice this is absolutely ridiculous and then it's, it's a wonder why more sovereign citizens are are being laughed at like this all started with Taj Tariq Bay and now it, it has extended to a bunch of other more sovereign citizens as you can see Sabir Bay is out here teaching this nonsense and this foolery will only just have you losing your 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 property why would somebody i don't even know if it's possible that somebody can put a lien on their own vehicle so what are you talking about that's the only thing they don't clean up all right and this is just some stuff that i put together as far as um um you know as far as people who wanted to actually have this because i gave this out this was a while ago and this, this talks about absolute title but it talks about title to land this is little small stuff that I put together. So you need to put a lien on yourself or against your your, your property. Your, your property. Yeah, you gotta claim it. Oh, and claiming is is with a lien. Yeah, the claim is the lien. That's why I was showing the certificate of title mm -hmm. on the bottom of every. I don't care what state you are in. On the bottom of the title, it always says lien holder and, and a component. What happens? You gotta look up every word to actually find out what they're talking about. But nobody does that. And when you get a title. We always fill out the back part, but I know in Pennsylvania, on the back of any certificate of title, it says, if you're not a registered dealer, Section D on the front should be filled in. If you grab a title, you'll see it on there. It's right there. But nobody fills out the front. So now what happens, you're committing fraud now by saying that you're a registered dealer. And you're not a registered dealer. So, like I said, they're betting on you not knowing none of this information. But I got my, my book is kind of beat up. But this is Title 75. Damn, this book is done. You looking? Any questions, man? Anybody? Tell them about the all caps on the driver like. Oh, we ain't go there, man. That's, <laughs> that's another story, though. That's yeah. commerce. <laughs> that's, 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 they wouldn't even get there. Like you always say, it's, it's, they'd be like, huh, what do you mean? 
that's a grammar thing right there. He's talking about the all caps and on your driver's license and birth certificates because they're not really talking about you. They're talking about com it's commerce. You know, that's all it is. Wrong. But people got to get the basic fundamentals because we have an issue of not what we have on a license. It's the, the, what they're doing to the people by taking their property. That's what we're talking about. Like the, the bogus, I mean, like you were saying, Dave, the, the stuff that's going on in traffic court, like I go down there, man, I'll be like, gosh, if they just knew what what is going on. And they run them through. They got the, the, the you know, your license suspended? No problem. Come on over here. Yeah. You know, instead of start complaining to the state attorney general. All right, here, here's the definition of a dealer. It says, it got two definitions too, of um, driver and it has dealer. It says a dealer is a person engaged in business of buying and selling and exchanging of vehicles. That's a dealer. So now, if you read it, it says, if you're not a registered dealer, section D on the front should be filled in. So they have you signing up on the things that don't really have anything to do with you. Yeah, because what happened, law is based on consent. So if, if you consent to it, that you are a dealer, they really can't hold it to you, but you can get them on fraud. Because they're committing fraud against you. And there's no statute of limitation on fraud. So what happens is that when you fill it out, you're telling them that you're a registered dealer. And you really you're not. So that's how they get you. So you should always fill out the front part of the title, which is here. Always fill this part out. That's, this actually, I think this was mine. This was mine. So this was mine, and I got it notarized right here. Mm -hmm. And what happened, I had the interest in the vehicle. So now, if they were to take the vehicle, I could charge them with the racketeering, I said again, um, theft of a motor vehicle, which is in a um, crime codes, Title 18, talks about theft of a motor vehicle, you taking my car off the street. This is how you can tie them up, but nobody takes that level, so we go to an attorney, the attorney stop you from even going to that point. Oh no, we'll work something out over here, we'll do this, we'll do that. They're stopping you. And what happens, they do more damage to our people, people in general, than any good. Because they're not telling people this. But we'll kick out fifteen, two thousand dollars $2,000 just to be the a case that probably is $200. Mm. But you're spending more. It's like a cycle. Any questions? Don't break up no witcher call, man. No grammar stuff, man. Pertaining <laughs> to motor vehicle law, man. Uh, tell them about the searches and seizures without a warrant. Oh wow, that's in that's in Title 18 too. Damn, that's in Title 18 also. You didn't just say that searches and seizures. They can't search you and seize it. Damn, look at this. This is what an application for a search warrant look like. Oh, this guy, this book got everything in it. But it ain't just Title 75, man. This has every. This is what they supposed to look like when they come. This is the layout. This and this is an all. Um, this is I think this title eighteen. This is what it's supposed to look like, man. There's a couple pages. Search warrants. This is the probable cause piece. This is what they supposed they, they supposed to give you this when they come in your house. They just bogart and come in your house. You take your car. Huh? And take your car. Yeah, take your car and all that. But like I said, there's a there's a procedure. What happens? If let's say, even though we know that we're dealing with criminals, I know that I'm dealing with criminals. So, rather I roll my window down, they'll try to break the window. You know what I mean? Like I said, you can get them again on highway robbery, threat, death, um, it's it's a threat of your life, all this. If you get out your car, they ask you a question sometimes. Really, state police officers do. They say, "Can I search your car?" They, if you pay attention, state police ask you that. Local police don't ask you that. See what I'm saying? But people don't know that you can say, hold up, man, you can't search my car. Right. You know what I mean? But I tell people that even though I know that they're gangsters, you, that's why I say get a tape recorder, get on the phone with somebody, start recording it, sit it between your seat. All these different things that we can start doing to protect ourselves because they're a total violation. I, me, myself, I tell people to get on the phone and call 911. I say, could you hold on one second, please? <laughs> Have somebody that's going to pull me over. <laughs> you know, they look like a police. You might be undercover. Could you, you know, I'm kind of scared. They, you know, they're behind me. You stay on the phone with me. I put the joint on speaking all that, Jack. I'll be like, hold on one second, boom. I have 911 on the phone with me right now, so I just want to know what's going on. <laughs> First and foremost, it'd be a 
What you just said is one of the most ridiculous things that I've heard in a long time. If a police officer pulls you over, you're going to then get on the phone and call the police. So the police officers are pulling you over for one reason. And now by you jumping on the phone, you're now operating a motor vehicle while using a cellular phone. So that's another offense. So you're just making things worse for yourself. Now, when they see that you're on the phone with the police, all they're going to do is hang the phone up. So that tactic is a no-go. It literally makes no sense. You're going to call the same people that are actually pulling you over. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So now, if what happens? If they grab your phone, what are they going to do? I already told you what they're going to do. And that's exactly what they would do. Hang up the phone. They grab the phone. Isn't it being recorded? So now when you go to court, well, no matter what they do to you, it's being recorded. So that, that tape can be subpoenaed inside the courtroom. Because now everything being taped with 911. So you can say, I want that tape to be subpoenaed. So somebody taped it. But you also have a backup too. You have a tape recording if you see and even if they take it and break the phone and exactly. throw it away, it's still recorded to that point. Exactly, because what happens, I've known stuff that people hang the phone up and somebody call 911, you may be arguing with somebody and you hang the phone and they know exactly where it's at, trace it, have it there. They do that all the time. It's recorded. So now, you got two types of way to record it. You're going to tape it yourself, you're going to call 911. Especially if it's an undercover cop, I just want to ask you some questions. What are you pulling me over for? No, you can't search my car. See what I'm saying? They can get in so many jams right now because people recording everything. Now, you got the police that's got the cameras in the car now. Record. I just seen them pull this girl off a bike. You know, and they, she's riding on a pavement. And they pulled off a bike. Now, the camera in the car is taping all this. It's catching it. Somebody took it and put it on YouTube. Didn't they make a policy in Philly where uh, Mayor Nutter said people could just search you if they... They can stop you and search you if they think that you have something. They can't. That's, he was see, trying to do something. See, like the that. thing about it, he cannot do that. That's not law. It's not lawful. See what I'm saying? He, Nutter cannot, and when you study the Home Rule Charter, Nutter cannot do none of this stuff. That's not the mayor's job. The mayor have to to go coincide with the state constitution, which he, which he took an oath on, the governor, then from the governor, you're dealing with the Supreme Court, you're dealing with the Constitution. Nutter can't pass. He can pass resolutions, which is not law, and ordinances is not law. Neither one of those things are laws. That's the only thing that Nutter can do. And he can only pass it. Any city can only pass those things pertaining to the municipalities. So now, if you're saying you live within a municipality, you live in the city of Philadelphia or in the city of wherever you're at, you're subject to the rules, regulations of the, stat, of the, of the ordinances. But people know the difference. They say the city of what? Well, I don't live in the city of Philadelphia. I live in Philadelphia County. Which one? So, why is this here? It don't say city of Philadelphia, do it? It says Philadelphia County, doesn't it? So, what's the difference between the two? It's a bad thing he has a gotcha moment here. Excuse me, sir. There is no difference between the two. See? So, they have to coincide with what the state says. So there's a difference between the city of Philadelphia and Philadelphia County. Two differences. So this guy is fucking stupid. So even this, and this is, is from, um, huh? One is a corporation. Exactly. This is the procedure of, of sales of a motor vehicle. And this is how, this is what they do right here. They talk, a notice shall be sent to regular mail with a certi cert certificate of mailing and also by certified mail return request it's before they sell your car. This is what they do. And they quoting right here, 6309 and 6309.1. So I showed you the two, 6309 and 6309.2. This joint, this joint uh, general court regulation set for procedure to the following of implementing of section 6309 and 6309.1. To certify the rights and responsibility, the abilities of various parties involved in the impoundment process, which may lead to the sale of impoundment of a motor vehicle and the transfer of the same title. It's right here. It's a procedure they go to. So now, they're supposed to immobilize the vehicle, have a hearing, and then they come back, and then they're supposed to take the car. So what they're doing, they're automatically taking the car, 
holding the car for ransom and making you pay ransom to get your car out. <laughs> They're the ones that's in total violation of this. Not you. <laughs> there are people feeling guilty. Oh, man. I got to go down there. I'll be like, yo, y'all don't get it. Buy some books, man. Spend <laughs> some money on these books. You know, the book. This book is about sixty dollars. You can save yourself probably two or three hundred dollars if you bought the book and just dug, put your head in the book. And it's better to wait a minute and stir up so much inside these courtrooms. You can I, literally is more that we used to walk in there with their books. I didn't put so many people onto the book. See, let's buy the book. No matter what state you in. You're in New York, buy the Motor Vehicle Law Book in New York. And where you can get the book from? Um, Gold's Publishing. I think they changed the names. Gold's Publishing is um, G-O-U-L-D, though, the way they spell it. But this one is from 2002. They don't change. The books don't change. I think, I believe it's this year. I think it's yellow, if I'm mistaken. But they, it don't change. The section is still there. You can even go on the Internet and find it, you know. You can go on the Internet and look up 6309 um, Pennsylvania Motor Vehicle Law, Title 75. You can go through all these, you know, these things to say, wait a minute, what are they doing? What do they mean by lien to a car? What do they mean by the, the registration to the car? The positive waste on the highway? Wait a minute, that don't make sense. Explain that about what you were talking about again? With the uh, the two, which one is the corporation? And the city of Philadelphia? Yeah, no, so the, the, well, you got the city of Philadelphia and Philadelphia County, which is two different. The, the Philadelphia County is ancient. It's ancient. You're an idiot! The city of is a corporation. City is a corporation. Hmm. So when you get into it, start dealing in the law dictionary, it talks about the cities being municipalities, which is corporations. That's why you have municipal police, the municipal trash trucks. If you look at their tags on the car, it all says municipalities on the back of them. That's and it had. It's like it's a city within inside of a city. It's like it's a state within inside of a state, but one is basically a corporation. That's why you hear them say Pennsylvania State Police and State of Pennsylvania. You're talking about two different people. Hmm. So, do you live in the city of Philadelphia or do you live in Philadelphia County? So, if I live in Philadelphia County, which is the ancient, how could the city of Philadelphia have jurisdiction over me? Unless I contracted some kind of way with the city of Philadelphia. So, now I'm subject to the rules, regulations, and statutes of the city of Philadelphia. But I don't work for them. How did they contract into that? Signing anything from the registration card to saying, I could put a paper in front of you and say, do you live in the city of Philadelphia? And somebody would put down there, yeah, I live in the city of Philadelphia. We're signing. And then they shoot it out. So now you're subject to everything that another's putting out. And once you sign it, that's a contract. It's a contract. Because now there's two types of signatures on that paper. And then the contract becomes law. Exactly. It's not really not really law, but they can't get involved in you signing that because it was voluntarily. Mm. That's why they say ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, so you agreed to it once you signed Exactly. You agreed to it. So now once you agree, they can't argue with you. You know, But you're arguing for them. But nobody's really teaching people, like, what it really means. Like, what do they really mean by, you know, city of Philadelphia? What do they really mean by Philadelphia County? You know, how could they take my property without due process? Again, we don't claim it. We're not putting liens against who it is. So now, what what it is that when we're younger, they say, I can turn 18, I can get a driver's license. Oh, shoot, no problem. They get you while you're young. I can get a driver's license. And nobody questions what a license is at all that most people don't even know these these cases exist because they are away from the public you know what I mean for it's mad cases that said that you have a right to travel you don't, you know you didn't need the driver's license nobody teaching their people the fundamental principles of what a driver's license is you know you see Sabir Bay is here teaching that more sovereign citizen nonsense the right to travel and this and that this is exactly why these Morris Americans are getting their windows smashed in and are being carted off to jail because they look up to people like Sabir Bay and Taj Tariq Bay. They listen to their nonsense and they actually go out in the real world and apply it and wind up finding out the hard way that none of that nonsense works. The driver's license is a privilege. Mm. So it's like it's, it's something that's granted to somebody. Mm. Yeah. Well, in law, lang the language is very different in law um, compared to Webster's. Not, it's not really that much of a difference, though. It's not that much of a difference. If you read, if you look up license, probably in Webster's, it's going to almost say the same thing in law. 
But this this is driver taken from um, Black's Law Dictionary too. Now listen to this. It says a driver is one who's employed in co conducting and operating a coach, carriage, or wagon, or other vehicle, or horses, or mules, or other animals, or bicycle, tricycle, or motor car, though not a street railroad car. A person actually doing driving, rather employed or by to drive, to drive or driving his own vehicle. What do they mean by that? If I was a hack or a person that's employed, I can I can use my car for a hack. I can be a taxi driver, which is a nothing but a hack. But I'm I'm picking up passengers. So it's a a driver's number one. It says one who's employed. Hmm. So if you're employed, I could be driving my own vehicle to transport people, like a chauffeur. That's what it is. So if you conducting any kind of business like that. Yes, you become a driver. And then you have passengers because now passengers pay a fare. This is what the motor vehicle law said. So, but if you're not operating in a... Uh, you need not have one. You okay. You need not have one. Yes, I said it. Until they go do the research on it because they might be looking at it and say, wait a minute, this guy's telling people to go out there not to get a, not to have a driver's license. No, I said go out there and go research this stuff. Yeah, but you also said you need not have one. After reading the definition of driver in the dictionary, you see it says something about someone being employed. The thing that you're overlooking is when they're talking about being employed, they're talking about doing an actual act. You are employed in driving. The act of driving is what you are employed in and it doesn't mean actually working so you're pretty much giving out bad advice you're telling people that they don't need a driver's license to drive and the advice that you're giving is going to be ruining people's lives because you do in fact need a driver's license to drive that is a fact that is non-negotiable but this this is driver taken from um, Black's Law Dictionary too. Now listen to this. It says a driver is one who's employed in co conducting and operating a coach, carriage, or wagon, or other vehicle, or horses, or mules, or other animals, or bicycle, tricycle, or motor car, though not a street railroad car. A person actually doing driving, rather employed or by to drive, to drive or driving his own vehicle. What do they mean by that? If I was a hack or a person that's employed, I can I can use my car for a hack. I can be a taxi driver, which is a nothing but a hack. But I'm I'm picking up passengers. So it's a a driver's number one. It says one who's employed. Hmm. So if you're employed, I could be driving my own vehicle to transport people, like a chauffeur. That's what it is. So if you're conducting any kind of business like that. Yes, you become a driver. And then you have passengers because now passengers pay a fare. This is what the motor vehicle law said. So, but if you're not operating in a... Uh, you need not have one. You okay. You need not have one. Yes, I said it. Until they go do the research on it because they might be looking at it and say, wait a minute, this guy's telling people to go out there not to get a, not have a driver's license. No, I said go out there and go research this stuff. You know, go buy the motor vehicle law. Now, this is talked about the encumbrance on a certificate of title, right? Now, remember I told you this is on there. It says the term encumbrance has the distinguished form, distinguished from, and considered to be broader and more comprehensive than, than the term lien. However, the term lien is sometimes used as synonymous with the word encumbrance. On the property where there is neither just in re nor rem, nor possession of a property. So what are they saying? The, the word lien is basically an interest in the property, but encompass can mean your title to your car, uh, let's say your house, which is land and tenant, because if you read the certificate of title, it's also one of the two. It talks about that inside there, but it's always in small print. So read every little small print that you see and look up everything that's on there. Every little small print and research these things. When I showed, when I was showing your father the, 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 the title on registration, they had that thing in small print. People just signed it. 
Oh man, I own my car. Now I just showed you how you don't own your car. Your registration is not ownership. Certificate of title is not ownership. So how do you own your car? You can never own the car. It's but you can have interest in it though. You cannot own it. You can just have interest in it. And that's all everybody has. You know, they can get interest. You don't own your car. That's why they can take it, do what they want. Could that be the case? You'll be filing complaints with the state attorney general about racketeering and, like I said, larceny and highway robbery. Tell them how can they own the car? The lien. You have to put a lien against it. It's on a certificate of title. I just showed two titles. I showed the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and I showed New York's title. Both of them it actually will tell you. It's right there. That you can, you got to read, you have to Hold read. Hold the title, title up again. This one right here. This is Pennsylvania. And there I do it. New York's title. Um, you got that one? Yep. And this is New York. And, and the viewers can pause it and read it themselves. You have to do your own you have to do your homework on all this information because Oh here go I brought it out. I brought it. Oh man, I thought I had this book. Which one is that? This is talking about oh I'm gonna run this down. But I thought I left it in the house. I found it. Alright. This is some this is some footnotes from the case as far as dealing with the car. Okay. Alright, it says the operator of a vehicle then has twenty four hours to appear before the appropriate judicial authority to produce the required documentation, such as proof of financial responsibility and registration or valid valid driver's license. Under Title seventy five, Pennsylvania Consolidated Statute, subsection sixty three oh nine point two. That's where it, this is how it's being broken down. The statutory authority to tow a vehicle that is not properly registered contains a 24-hour grace period. That a lot. Now tell me, do they do that? No. It says the statutory authority to tow a vehicle that is not properly registered contains a 24-hour grace period that allows the vehicle operator or owner to demonstrate that the vehicle is indeed properly registered and insured, or that the operator is properly licensed. This appears to be the important element of law which satisfied due process, remember I just said that, it prevents the commonwealth from improperly confiscating a person's property. See what it just said? So they're dealing with due process, 24-hour period. Do you get 24-hour period? No, you do not. They take it right then and there. Hmm. All right. All right. It says, having to demonstrate the car was not told in accordance with the statutory provisions, we briefly return to Section 3352 of the Motor Vehicle Law of Title 75. Both the trial court and the Commonwealth have claimed that the section 3352 encompasses the community caretaking fu functions of the police that properly allowed the police to tow and search the vehicle. This 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 no notion was voiced by the Commonwealth versus Henning Henningen. All right, that's the name of the case. But there's a couple of things that I just want to run down. Mm -hmm. Um. There is no question that the General Assembly has granted the local government the authority to remove any abandoned or junk vehicles. See, your car is not abandoned nor is it junk. They they have to be abandoned or junk vehicles. And that's under Title 53 of the Pennsylvania Statutes, subsection 46202. The vehicles in question here, are here however, was neither abandoned nor junk. So the only way they're supposed to take your car directly off the street if it's abandoned or junk. Now you listeners tell me what are they doing? There's racketeering. The, it says also go on. It is applicable throughout the Commonwealth. Thus, Norristown cannot enact neither a local ordinance. Remember, I told you about the ordinance. It says it neither can neither it cannot enact neither a local ordinance or an issue of a general order that limits the term of general applicable of 6309.2 specifically Norristown's, Norristown has no authority to withdraw or alter any of the various due process provisions provided by the legislators in section 6309.2 but which are not found in the general order so the city cannot do anything that they're doing if the general assembly said 
this is what the law is. If the state law says this, this is what the law is. So what is happening? They are taking people's cars and under, under what's that section um, 53 of the Pennsylvania statutes. They're taking it saying it's junk cars or abandoned cars. Mm. But they're not taking it under the 6309.3, 6309, 6309.1 or 2, which is dealing with due process. You have a 24-hour period. Then you go to court because you're supposed to immobilize the vehicle. Now, the issue here with what Sabir Bay is saying is that he is trying to provide more sovereign citizens with loopholes in the law so that way if they know these quote unquote laws their vehicles won't be told right away regardless of whether the states are doing things incorrectly if you more sovereign citizens were driving properly with your cars properly registered and driving around with proper plates and driving around with valid driver's licenses and not these fake Morris travel cars, you guys wouldn't even have to be dealing with any of this stuff. So learning any of this stuff that Sabir is teaching, this is only for criminals because any law abiding citizen doesn't have to worry about, oh, well, they, the, the law is that they only are supposed to tow my car within 24 hours. This only applies to the more sovereign citizens who know they're riding around with fictitious license plates, no driver's licenses, and no insurance. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to teach them the law so that way it'll, in essence, buy them 24 hours because in 24 hours... They still won't be able to um, produce the proper paperwork to show that their vehicles are registered or that they have driver's licenses. So it really doesn't matter. All you're doing is is, is wasting, is, is buying them 24 hours and they actually don't need it because they won't be able to produce anything legitimate within those 24 hours. So what he's doing is trying to teach criminals how to buy time. Not take it. Hmm. Uh, this things get this thing get even deeper, man. Um, there's some more cases in here, and it was funny because this was taken to this was given to me by a, a prosecutor. It says when a vehicle is immobilized to subsection A one, the operator of the vehicle may appear before the appropriate judicial authority within 24 hours from the time the vehicle was immobilized. The appropriate judicial authority may issue a certificate of release. So they got to immobilize the vehicle, not take it. You got 24 hours. Mm. Right? Right. It says, if the certi- it says, it says certification, it says, if a certification of release is not obtained within 24 hours from the time the vehicle was immobilized, the vehicle shall be towed, stored by the appropriate towing storage agency. See? They said if, it's, if the certification of release is not obtained within 24 hours from the time the vehicle was immobilized, the vehicle shall be towed and stored by the appropriate towing and storage agent under subsection C. So what they're doing to people is they bamboozling the hell out of people. As I stated, even if what you're saying is correct and they are towing people's cars on the spot when they're supposed to be doing it within 24 hours, the state recognizes that these Morris fools driving around with these fictitious plates and licenses, they're not going to be able to produce the proper paperwork to get their cars released. So what they're doing is they're, they're not wasting their own time. They know, okay, let's hook this thing up now and take it to the tow yard. It is what it is. If you more sovereign citizens would drive around legally, then you wouldn't have to worry about this. Now, this video is teaching more sovereign citizens how to drive around illegally. He's telling you that you don't need a license and yada, yada, yada. So he's teaching criminal activity. This is absolutely ridiculous. 
And how were you able to start getting over people like this in general? Well, you got bogus commercials like if you don't have insurance, you know, your car can be confiscated. Insurance companies are private. So you're going to force somebody to get insurance? Look up the definition of insurance. It's an agency. They, they're trying to force somebody to contract with somebody. They don't force you to have life insurance. They don't force you to have fire insurance. They don't force you to have house insurance. So how are they going to force you to have car insurance? It's all one big scheme that's being done. All right. It just talks about the impoundment. It says, a defendant motor vehicle may not be impounded for 24 hours. Now, I'm, uh, this is what it is. A defendant motor vehicle may not be impounded for 24 hours after it is immobilized. So it is to enable the owner to or operator of the immobilized motor vehicle which to appear in traffic court within 24 hours of this vehicle's immobilization furnish proof of registration and financial responsibility. Can we please get it? Cause I, they might think I just made this up, bro. Highlighted right section. Right there. They might think I just made this up. Can we? I want to get it even a little closer because <laughs> they might think I made this up. And they can pause it and read it. And go to the top part where it says, where is it coming from? The Court of Common Pleas of Philadelphia County. Philadelphia Traffic Court, First Judicial Joint General Court Regulations, Court of Common Pleas, and Traffic Court Number 98-1. Now you tell me what they're doing to people. Okay. How can they take somebody's property straight off the, off the street? This, don't, don't expect an attorney to tell you this. They're not going to tell you this information right here. So they are in total... Man, let me let me. Man, and the judges and, tra and lawyers at traffic court, they all know this. Do they? They supposed to know. <laughs> you know, they supposed to know this, cause that's what they're in there for. Hold up, let me find a RICO law. The RICO law is in here somewhere. What is the RICO law? Racketeering, Title Eighteen. Okay. And what and what the police officers do every day. Hold up. I know I got it in this book. It's um it's I know it's in Title eighteen. Um, Title 18 of the United States Code. I don't know if it's in this book, but it's the, uh, the racketeering law. Well, it may not be in this one. I think it's in the other book, but um, it's in here somewhere. I know it is. It gotta be. But the racketeering law is actually basically. It's talking about, oh, here you go, RICO law. Racket, RICO law. It says, racketeering influence of corrupt organization laws. Federal state designed to investigate, control, and prosecute organized crime under Title 18 of the United States Code, um, sub subsection 1961. Both criminal, criminal prosecution and civil action may be brought under the RICO statute. The RICO law prohibits any person from engaging in activities which activate interstate or foreign commerce, interstate or foreign commerce, including one, using income to receive from a pattern of racketeering. And this is what they're doing to people? They're using, they taking people's property and they're getting money from it? Okay. To require an interest in an enterprise. Acquiring, maintaining an interest in an enterprise through a pattern of racketeering. Three, conducting or participating in affairs of an enterprise through patterns of racketeering. Four, conspire, conspiring to commit any of the above offenses to establish prima facie RICO claims. A civil plaintiff, civil plaintiff or prosecutor must allege that the existence of seven elements. One, that the defendant, one, the defendant, two, through commission of two or more acts. Isn't it two of them that two or three when they come take your car? 
the tow truck guy, the other police officer, through the commission of two or more acts, three, um, constituting a pattern, four, racketeering activity, five, directly or indirectly invest and maintain an interest in or participants, participants in an enterprise activity of which affect interstate commerce, Title 18, United States Code, subsection 1962. So, everything that they're doing is racketeering. It's RICO. Wrong. This is what the police is doing. That's why I said they violate your life, liberty, and property. Those three. Life, liberty, and property is being violated. They threaten you with a gun. They stop your liberty. And they're taking your property. Hmm. There's no laws for this. There's none. See, what they're doing is they're putting everybody else inside commerce. You're acting like you're operating in commerce. This is what they're doing to people. Man, this thing, I tell you, you want to see how deep this rabbit hole go? It goes very deep. Very deep. And people, what I'm seeing now, people are really getting fed up with this, man, because this type of information is not being publicized on um, radio. It's not being published unless you come to Civil Alert. And that's about it. You come to my show, you're going to get this type of information. But you're not going to see it on mainstream radios, um, um, mainstream TV. You know, they're going to tell you, oh, he broke the law when you don't even know the law. And half of these cats is on TV and radio talking about somebody violating the law. Or oh, he don't have a license. That's why he's speaking out against us. No, I do have one of their commercial activity licenses. But um, I'm trying to show people the real deal on what's going on. This is what is happening. I know that I'm up against criminals. The city halls. The traffic courts. I know that I'm up against criminals. But the thing about it, though, there's a procedure like it says, due process must always be upheld. Your property cannot be taken without due process. These bogus attorneys, these bogus politicians, these bogus behind judges and, uh, you know, polit all of them. They're all in cahoots, man, to keep the people deaf, dumb, and blind. You know, so this is why radio... Get a hold real brothers behind radio, on the radio. Real brothers on TV. They're trying to, like, right now, the internet is where the, where everything is at. The YouTubes, the MySpaces, internet radio, internet television. This is where we're going to get this information out of. Because they're, they don't, you know, their invested interest is to keep the people at bay. They need the money. So they talk about everybody else is criminal, but these cats is criminals. And we raising more and more slaves, more and more every day. Do a rundown on what's all the books and paperwork they should get. There should well, be nice tools to have when doing your research. Yeah, this is one. This is um the Commonwealth Constitution. If you read through this Constitution, it will tell you in the first pages of this. It says all inherent powers inside the people and all governments are founded. On their authority and instituted for their peace, safety, and happiness, for the advancement of these ends. This is in the Commonwealth Constitution. So, how the hell can a cop tell you what to do when you're supposed to work for you? This is another one. And you want to break, get broken down about the traffic court. What is traffic court is about? You know, when did traffic court get established? It's an institution for people that operate in commerce. Traffic means you're trafficking something. It's commerce. Black's Law Dictionary. Um, Title 75 of the Pennsylvania Motor Vehicle Law. You got Webster's Dictionary. You got Black's Law Dictionary. And for can we, and I'm going to get a close up on this also because um, the definition of traffic. Because we go to traffic court, all right? Now let me let me for the for everybody that may be looking. See the definition of traffic? Can you get a close up on that? Yep. Commerce, trade, sell, or exchange. So do you tell me why are people in traffic court? Where is it at that you're doing this right here? 
Okay, so what Sabir Bay is trying to infer is that the word traffic doesn't apply to us when we're in our motor vehicles and on the road. But he doesn't understand that it actually does. Now, you guys see the definitions. You see what's underlined and highlighted. And it, the part that I um, highlighted says... The passing to and fro of persons, animals, vehicles, or vessels along a route of transportation. So let me paint this picture. If I'm in my house and I plan on going to my mother's house, I'm going to get into my vehicle, right? And I'm going to take a certain route to her house to go visit her. So I would be that falls under the definition of traffic. I will be driving my vehicle along a street. Everything I just said fits within that definition. So the fact that Sabir Bay doesn't understand that when you're driving from a destination from destination A to destination B, you are taking a route to from destination A to destination B and you are on that route you're going along a street or a highway so you are you do fall within the definition of traffic so I don't understand why he doesn't realize or understand that but then again, this is pretty much a more sovereign citizen class trying to educate more sovereign citizens how to be better criminals. It is not to help them and because the, the quote unquote man is doing them wrong. No, this class is he's trying to teach more sovereign citizens how to be better criminals and how to not follow the rules and to try to look through the loopholes so that way you can get away with driving unregistered vehicles and driving without licenses. That is the objective here. He is trying to teach them how to be better criminals when he should be trying to teach them how to stay within the law, not how to, um, you know, slither around the rules and this and that this is no good this is Taj Tariq Bay sovereign citizen talk and it will ruin your life do not follow this stuff be a law abiding citizen follow the rules you're not doing that man I just broke down driver somebody that's employed Traffic, traffic court. They say you're trafficking drugs. What are you doing? You're moving drugs from place to place. So, well, why are we here? These are the questions that need to be raised in traffic court. These are the questions that need to be raised in common police court. These are the questions we need to have raised in superior or supreme court. What are you doing to the people in traffic? And traffic, and I was talking and about which traffic book court. is that from? That's a Black's Law Dictionary. It should be in that. It should be in that edition also. Nobody's doing any of this stuff right there. Hmm. The first thing it says, what is commerce? Commerce, tree, tree. So Nobody asks these change. questions, man. <laughs> Nobody asks none of these questions. Define traffic to me. I mean, my mom told me to ask questions all the way around. I just wanted to know. What do they mean by traffic? What do you mean by somebody's driving? See, they, what they did, they flipped it because, if, again, if you watch the TV, they say we have drivers. What do they say? We have drivers and we have passengers. But nobody questions what a driver and a passenger is. Nobody says anything. So now we just go along. Yeah, well, I was driving down the road. So when you bring up stuff like I'm traveling, that the Constitution says, they be like, what are you talking about? Yeah, ain't nobody stopping me from traveling. I heard stuff like this. Ain't nobody stopping me from getting on the plane. Ain't nobody stopping me from getting on the bus. This is what smart judges say. They say, ain't nobody stopping me from doing it. No. The Constitution says I have a right to travel. It didn't say which way I travel. It just said I have a right to travel. Yes, the Constitution does say that you have the right to travel. But the thing is, it's the, the 
the the kicker is the mode in which you decide to travel might be an issue. Now, if you are in your car and you're driving, your mode of traveling would be driving. And to drive, you need to have a driver's license. So if you don't have a driver's license, then that mode of travel is not for you. Therefore, you can walk, you can ride your bike, you're riding your bike can be your mode of travel. Walking can be your mode of travel. Riding roller skates can be your mode of travel. So for you to act as if just because the Constitution says you have the right to travel, nobody is debating that. But it is the mode in which you decide to travel that might be an issue for more sovereign citizens because they don't like to follow the rules. Now, if you want to drive, driving is, well, getting a driver's license, that is a privilege. So if you don't have a driver's license, then you don't have the privilege to use driving as your mode of travel. Now, these sovereign citizens like to say, oh, I'm not driving, I'm traveling. No, when you're driving, you are driving and traveling at the same time, and it's not one or the other. When you look at the gear shift in a car, it doesn't say T for travel. It says D for drive. So your arguments are null and void. So That's what I was talking about. I said, was it something in the Constitution? Exactly. It said you have a right to travel. Right. But the flip side, what they do is to say, we're not stopping you from traveling. See what I'm saying? This is how the smart ones go. They'll say, oh, no, we're not stopping you from traveling. You get on the bus, the plane, whatever. We're not stopping that. But I'm not using the way you... That's the way you're interpreting it. You're traveling in your vehicle. I'm interpreting it that I'm traveling in my vehicle. So you tell me, how are you saying that I'm driving? Excuse me, Sabir. What in the doohickey are you talking about? This is some tomfoolery that you are speaking it's absolutely insane that this is the brother that is out here teaching people. It's a wonder why all these more sovereign citizens are getting their windows smashed and things of that nature. Like, I, I, I just don't get it. I, I honestly don't get it. First and foremost, you're quoting the Constitution saying that the Constitution says you have the right to travel. And it does say that, but you you you, act, you you must not realize that the Constitution was written before cars were even invented. So when the Constitution is talking about traveling, there is no way that it is talking about traveling in a motor vehicle, a.k.a. a car, because cars were not even invented yet yet you talking about oh well that's the way i interpret it i'm sorry sir your interpretation of the constitution is just flat out wrong and you're interpreting it wrong purposely because you don't want to abide by the rules you want to be able to do things your way well i'm sorry sir that is not how the world works you must be an adult and follow the rules. If not, you're going to find yourself in a heap of trouble listening to this man, Sabir Bay, teaching this foolishness, and it will eventually ruin your life. See what I'm saying? Like, if you say I'm driving, define driving to me. I just need to know. Where can I find it at? Can I look it up in Webster's? Can I look it up in Title 75? Where can I look up the word driving at? And the first thing you're going to see when you see drive is going to see somebody that's employed. Mm. Same thing with operator. Exactly. Same thing. With somebody operating a, um, a crane, that's business. If somebody operating an elevator, somebody's operating the elevator. So you come on as a passenger, but you are uh, the operator. They used to have that back in the day. They used to have somebody in the elevator that right. would operate it. And then when you read the certificate, it says operator's license. Get in the elevator and read it. It says operator's license. And it tell you what day the certificate was issued. See what I'm saying? So... You define to me what operator mean. You define to me <laughs> what driver mean, 
and then define to me what drive traveling means. So if you can define these things to me, I submit. I'll pay the ticket, not a problem. But nobody's questioning these things right here. Nobody's saying, look, define to me what you mean by driving. Because I'm telling you, I heard them say this, man. I heard that I heard them say, well, ain't nobody stop me from traveling. Mm -hmm. I hear this all the time. But wait a minute. Your tra my travel is not the way you're talking about traveling. Well, brother, no, you need to have licenses because you got people out here that have accidents. I know more people got driver's license have more accidents than a little bit. And I know people that don't have licenses that has never had an um, accident. So you should be teaching them the, because uh, it's all commerce, number one. You should teach them the rules of the road. That may be something a little different. If you peep what they do, private planes, you don't need a license. You notice that? Right. Private planes, you don't need a license, right? Mm -hmm. But when you start getting a commercial plane, you get a, a commercial license to fly a commercial plane. You get a certificate when you drive. You get a certificate when you drive a private plane to say you're qualified to fly that plane on a private plane. But in a commercial plane, what happens? You got passengers. Now you are flying, so you get a pilot's license. Difference. It's the same thing with the car, but nobody's tying these two together. Saying, "Wait a minute, if I'm not a chauffeur, why do I need a license?" I'm not a chauffeur. I'm traveling with my family. So I don't need a license. So I could I can agree with the certificate. No problem. Let's get a certificate. But if it's the law, why they tell you go apply for a license when the law said I'm supposed to have a license? See what I'm saying? So what am I applying for? A privilege to do something? <laughs> they do it. So nobody questions none of these things. If the law says I'm supposed to have it, why do you give me an application tell me apply? Because apply means I'm applying for something. So I need I need a benefit now. So what are you giving back to me when I'm giving to you? This is what we should be looking at. But this is so the uh, yo man, you don't you be surprised me attorneys I try to sit down and talk to them about this with this. And this evil be over their heads. They'd be like, oh man, that's too much, dude. Or we'll just go over here and get the dumb ones over here. This you got a problem with your driver's license, no problem. Pay me five hundred dollars, we're gonna get it back for you. That's what they do. But now if they're forcing you to do it, I always tell people, put this stuff under duress. You're forcing me to sign. You're forcing me to have this. You're forcing me. Okay, now, when I give you this in a courtroom, we're in a court of record, I give you the license. Say, could you read it? You know, I don't call him your honor, but could you read what's on it? Give it to the cop. Let the cop read everything on it. And then he might say your name. He might say your address. He might say blah, blah. Did you read a little further down where it said all rights reserved and it was under duress? Did you read that part for the record? And if they question you about what they mean about the rest, oh, oh man, you're forcing me to do this because the Thirteenth Amendment said I can't be compelled to do anything because that's forces. That's a form of slavery. See, everything we got to do, we got to deal strictly with the law because they don't bring the law. So if the Constitution says I can't be compelled to do this, that's a form of slavery. Compelling somebody is forcing somebody to do something. So the Thirteenth Amendment forbids that. That's there. What are you talking about? We got the Constitution right here. You took an oath on the Constitution, right? Police officer, judge, prosecutor. Y'all did, not me, you did. So let's tie them up the same way they tied us up. Have us keep coming back and forth and back and forth inside the courtrooms. We gotta know how to play the same game, but we need we need the tools to do this. Cause they think the Moors was way even the Moors that was coming in, they thought we was away from all this. They thought we was like outlaws. There's no reality, y'all the outlaws, because outlaws mean that you're outside the law. We are in the law. You're outside the law. So we're dealing with the law. And we just trying to bring it to the people. You know, like yeah, I said, people we, misunderstand that you say you don't, you know, have to have a driver's license. They say, oh, what you trying to undermine the law or undermine the government? Yeah, and it's they, almost the exact opposite. Yeah, they because they don't know, and it, it, they don't know, and that's why they say ignorance of the law is no excuse. But who's really teaching us law? Do we have attorneys coming back after they went to law school and saying, look, let me teach you this, let me show you this? Now, if you know a little bit of something, they would they would open up to you. If you know a little bit of something, they'll share. But if you know nothing, shit, I'm going to fleece you. What they, used to, you. what they used to have in a house back in the day? You said the two things? A Bible and a law dictionary. In colonial days, they had a Bible and a law dictionary. Cause these, like, a lot of these law dictionaries go back probably like 1700s. They had both of them. But this, this is just not Black's Law Dictionary. You got words and phrases, corpus, jurisdiction, 
America George Prudence. She got a lot of stuff. And when you go through the whole volume of this and you look look up every word, man, you be thinking that this means that means something. Man, that has total different meaning. You start going to a higher court. And this is why they cut you off and don't allow you to go to the higher court. Because they have to keep it the way it is. The first you go, if you let, if they let you, will be the common pleas court. Common pleas. You get a pill from traffic court, got directly to the common pleas court, and sometimes they stop it right there. You know, we won't go no further. And sometimes they don't want to fight it anyway, because it'll be a waste of time. They just shocked that you took it from that point and came over here. Most people try to go to traffic court, and trying to force this stuff on traffic court judges, man, and they don't want to hear that. It's not a court of record. We can say what we want to say. We can lock you up. And they have lines of brothers lined up. I'll be like, gosh, 65% of the people is locked up for nonviolent crimes. 65% of the pit population is locked up behind that. They're not moving. Driving in the car is not a crime. It's an infraction. So how could you lock somebody up for that? Um, how? I'm just... How do you do that? <laughs> this dude is just rambling on and on and on and on about nothing. But I must admit, this is a younger version of Sabir Bey. And I actually like this version of him better than his current self. Now in current times, he is so arrogant and he just swears he knows it all. But this guy right here, he is... He seems actually more intelligent back then than he does now for some reason, which is odd. But regardless, he's sitting up here teaching all the wrong things. He's trying to teach about law and his interpretation on things is just wrong. And it's just sad because people are actually going to follow this nonsense and take it out into the real life, into real life and get in trouble listening to this fool and he's going to be nowhere to be found when they try to contact him to help them get out of the trouble that they got in because they listened to him he's going to be nowhere to be found and that is such a shame it's an infraction it's a breach of a contract and if it's a breach of a contract where's the contract at yo i wish i had a yo we made them and they still got it on it they got this ticket i'm gonna, I'm gonna find it for you uh, 4904, I think it's 4904. In traffic court, they got people filling out this form. And it says, unsworn, unsworn falsification to authorities. Right? And in there, it talks about swearing to authorities, like lying to them. And the ticket, they gave the wrong one. They got the wrong one on it. People don't even read it. It's in fine print. And it talks about swearing to authorities. I think it's 4904. If I am mistaken. Who's swearing to authority? The people? Yeah, they fill out these forms in traffic court. Here you go. 4904, unsworn falsification to authorities. Is that a person commits a, mis a misdemeanor <clears throat> for the second degree if he attend to mislead a public servant in performing his official functions? So, in traffic court, they got the wrong code on there. If anybody in Philadelphia traffic court read it, they got 4703 on the card. 4703. It's not unsworn falsification to authorities. Where's 4703? Yo, man, I'm telling you this. When you start seeing all this stuff, like reading everything, and we don't, like I just told you, you just sign it, they know that you don't know. Where's that 47? I think it's 4703. It might be in here. It's 4703. somewhere in here. Yeah, 4703. Retaliation for past official actions. That's what they got on the ticket. Now, I wanted to bring that to show you that the violators form it's a form they give you when you fill out and fill off the traffic court they give you 4703 but they'll tell you it's for unsworn falsification to authorities they know people not reading and I guarantee you it's still on the books to this day what's the day's date? the 13th? trust me the 13th of 2009 we did this 5 years ago trust me in fill off the traffic court it's going to have 4703 on there but 4904 is unsworn falsification. And to what's authority. 4703? It's retaliation for past official actions. Mm, and that's what mm. they list under that title? They, they, they took 4703 and put it under 40, 4904, John, for unsworn falsification to authorities. And people fill the form out. They get everybody to fill the form when you come in there. And everybody just. You're not even thinking that they got the wrong codes on it. 
This is in Title 18. And they do that purposely? Purposely. There's no mistakes in politics. There's none. And I wish I had the, the, the violators form to show people that, that slip of paper, man. Yo, it's so much, even on the citations. Like, I can go through the citations and be like, God, they're getting these people. They're getting them over and over and over again. But nobody's paying it no attention. Because, again, radio and television is programming you. The real information is not being put out here, man. So... What else, man? What else we gonna cover? He said, you know, he said he's gonna do a documentary on traffic court because it's a lot of our people that's down there, man. That's being like, whew. Yep, it's gonna be right on YouTube. Huh? Documentary gonna be on YouTube. It's gonna be they. They gonna be ban they bamboozled, man. Cause this, I mean, I beat my book up, y'all. You can tell I read my books, but um, these are just some of the sections on here. That's that's the back of the book right there. Goes quick find locator. Yeah, everything is like these are just like the sections that you can go on. But um, this is kind of beat up. But everybody's starting to carry that book though, because my nephew actually he went and bought it also because this one has this book has Title 18, Title um, 42, Title 75, um, Title 67, which is the city codes. This is um talk about the city codes, Title 42 is judiciary. So each part is in here. And you can go down to room um what's the um chief clerk's office in City Hall. And if you read the ordinances, man, trust me, <laughs> it's not what you think it is. The ordinances, you can look up resolutions, none of this stuff is laws. It applies to people who work for the municipality. Anybody away from the municipality, that's what applies to trash men, police officers. Who else has that on their car? Um, any city worker. Anybody that works for the city. So, so you say it's best to take your case to a higher court or pull the traffic court? Yeah, always that, man. It's straight from the door. I mean, get it out of that court, man. Cause you ain't winning. They ain't man. Cause you ain't winning. They even, two things they want to know. Guilty, not guilty. That's what they say. Are you guilty or not guilty? Either or. You say not guilty. Still got to pay something to even get out of there. What people can do is go directly to the window. I don't know how it's set up now, but you can tell them, I want an appeal from the door. From the door, I want an appeal. They're going to take it, you're going to get it probably three, maybe three, six months or something like that. And they'll move it from there to Common Pleas Court. But at the same, what they're going to do is give you a, a form to fill out. Then when you get in there, the prosecutor for PennDOT will be in there. He's going to give you a form. He's going to ask you, are you in, are you going to be in pro se? Are you going to be defending your case? I'm telling you, this is crazy. This is how we set up, dude. You can just sit in courtrooms sometimes and see how they play. They'll give you a form and they say, are you going to be in pro se? And some people say, yeah. I'll be like, no, I'm going to be in pro se persona. <laughs> Not pro se. I can go against you. In pro persona means that I'm in my proper person and really I'm speaking for myself. So it's a little spin on it. There goes that Morris Sovereign Citizen gibberish. I'm in propia persona. I'm in propia persona su juris. That is straight up Morris Sovereign Citizen slash Sovereign Citizen gibberish. Sabir Bay is a sovereign citizen. He is sitting up here teaching sovereign citizen phrases. Like Tajiri Bay, in propria persona sujuris, in propria and in propio heredis, as are all Moorish American nationals. We are both Aboriginal and Indigenous to this land of ancient Morocco, Asia, North America, a Mexum, also called the North Gate. Some people say, yeah, I'll be like, no, I'm going to be in propria persona. <laughs> Not proof, but I can go against you. You see what I'm saying? Even Light to Jerry Bay knows that all Morris Americans are supposed to appear in propria persona sujuris. Light to Jerry Bay, in propria persona sujuris, in and in propio heredis, as are all Moorish American nationals. We are both Aboriginal and Indigenous to this land of ancient Morocco, Asia, North America, a Mexum, also called the North Gate.
Yeah, I'll be like, no, I'm gonna be in probate persona. <laughs> Not proof where I can go against you. In probate persona means that I'm in my proper person and really I'm speaking for myself. So it's a little spin on it. But what they do is more so that you can defend your court, your case. You know what I mean? And then what they do in there's another one. They, you be in common pleas court. They say, all rise. Do you understand the what they say? Do you plead guilty on us? What is a they, they they make everybody stand that they do them collectively, and they ask them. Uh, they say, do you all understand motor vehicle code section such 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 yeah. such, such, such such? And they all go, yes. That's what they do to people. And then I'm that, not lying. It's like that. Well, he told me that too before. Yeah, I said, I went yo, there. that's yeah, what they yeah. do. Now who who got this book? Mm -hmm. Who in that courtroom <laughs> and the, those people that stood up and said that? Do they have the motor vehicle law book? No, they do not. I'm telling you, this is what they do. I used to be to the point, I used to piss them off so bad that I could see the book from a distance on a counter because I know the book. They have, the prosecutor will have this sitting on a counter. And I will quote every section out of the book as I'm standing there. And I'm quoting sections out of the book. And they would shuck it aside and say, okay, dismiss. <laughs> because I know everything that's inside this book. So now, if I'm sitting there and you want me to plead guilty to something... I'm like, okay, well, wait a minute, second. Now. And always got to be an eyeball. You, can, I, I don't stand up with all that stuff when they stand up and say, I plead guilty. Nah, dude, we ain't going through that, man. <laughs> what section did you want me to plead guilty to? See what I'm saying? What section? Because you just ran off something, and I don't know what it is. I, like I just showed you the registration. People think that the registration that you own your car. That was a littering law. The registration, that but a littering law. So... People signing these documents, man, blind. And it, you doing it to yourself. <laughs> Tell you, take a visit to the courtroom sometimes. I, matter of fact, I might go down there next week. Just in, I think they're trying to stop people now from coming in. I, I really think they're trying to, like, if you don't have a case, I think they're trying to stop you now from even coming in there. So is it is it public anymore? No. It's private. Because if it's public, you can't stop somebody from coming inside the courtroom. You already searched me like crazy downstairs, so why not that I can't come in? You think I'm going to have something? Come on. They have classes. They take classes inside the courtroom. That's people who's getting ready to be um, prosecutors or attorneys. They take them in the courtroom and let them, you know, fill out the court, see what's going on. They, they do that. So why not you going in the courtroom to see how everything is, you know, being played out? I mean, this is what I wanted to do also, and I want to actually start having people going to um, law libraries, man, so we can have tours inside the law library to show, have people look up different sections, like, like I said, Corpus George Second of America, George Prudence. You go look up that section, you go look up this section, you go look up that, and you go look up this, and we all come to the table, and we all have our own, you know, jobs to do, and we look up each piece and tie it all together. And where's the law library located for the people? Well, you got room 600 in City Hall. In, in city, any, any, what you call them, I believe is in every, if I am mistaken, it might be in every state too. In every city. Every city has a law library. But I know room 600 in City Hall, they have a free law library. You can go in there and sit. In Philadelphia? In there. Yeah, Philadelphia. You can go in there and sit. And whatever you're looking for is right there. Right there. But also, um, Jenkins Law Library. What a page? Jenkins... And Philadelphia have a law library too. But it's like, I believe that's like $5 to get in that place. Um, what did I do? It's in there. Some of Jenkins. Uh, yeah. This is where I got this from. Yeah. This is a law library too. See, and this says no loans. But this is Jenkins Law Library. And this one is on. Um, uh, where is it at? 7th and Chestnut, I believe. 7th and Chestnut, where our Goldberg used to be at, down there. It's a, um, That's a law library, but that's five hours to get inside that place right there. So I wouldn't even, what you call You know, I wouldn't go in that one. I'd go in 600. You know. So, there's a couple of law, like I said, start visiting these law libraries, start having sit down talks, classes, and stuff like that, man. Because it's not going to come from any of these politicians, man. It's going to come from us having these classes. And then closing, I want to very close out. What is this? As a matter of fact, here, go right here. Wow. I wrote this down for somebody, too. 
I wrote this down. I don't even know I had that. What is that? Thirty-seven oh nine. That's the registration, John. I wrote it down because a, a lady had a um ticket. I think it was you know it was even that. I've dealt with a ticket or something, but that's what it is. So you can ask anybody to pull out their registration to a car, and that's what they're gonna get. Hmm. It's a it's a littering law. That's all hmm. it is. So, so that's about it right now. To we'll stay to the camera with your name. Sabira Sabira Bay. Okay, so that's the end of the video and the end of Sabir Bay's more sovereign citizen class. Um, my only advice is to anyone looking to join this more sovereign citizen group, don't do it. Everything that this man has just taught is a misinterpretation of law. And his miss, if you listen to his misinterpretation, it will ruin your life. He's telling you guys that you don't need a driver's license. He's telling you guys he's misinterpreting definitions of driving and traffic. Like, there's no need to listen to this. This whole thing, this whole class was pretty much a class to teach more sovereign citizens how to sneak and slither around the law. Don't do that. Just be a law abiding citizen and you won't even need to know any of this nonsense that he just taught. Because first and foremost, almost I would say 99% of the stuff that he read, he misinterpreted. So if he's giving you the wrong interpretation of what he is reading and telling you that this is going to give you fruitful results in your life, you're sadly mistaken. This stuff will ruin your life. If you listen to him, if you drive around with no license, and if you talk about him um, driving and not traveling and you're going into court in proprio persona, you're, you're, you're done. You're done. Watch the rest of the videos on this channel, and you will see that none of this stuff works ladies and gentlemen just be a law-abiding citizen and that's it that is it you will need none of this nonsense that he's trying to teach all he's trying to do is teach you guys how to be better criminals and you don't want to be a criminal to, be to begin with just be a law-abiding citizen and don't listen to this morris sovereign citizen foolishness Yeah. Oh, no! 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 Oh, no